Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. In the last episode, we looked at using fixed item lanes in Reaper 7. And just in case you didn't know, Reaper 7 was recently released. For those of you who had concerns or questions about the licensing model for Reaper, if you bought a license for Reaper during the version 5 cycle, you were allowed two major releases for one license. So you received all of the point releases for Reaper 5, as well as the update to Reaper 6 and all of the point releases for that. If you'd like to upgrade to Reaper 7, you will be required to renew your license. And I know that what's affordable versus what's expensive is relative, but you've got to admit, $60 is a fair rate for two full releases. If you feel that the price is too much or maybe need to save up a little bit, there's nothing stopping you from continuing to use the current installation of Reaper. The version that you're currently using will not stop working, at least not as far as Reaper developers are concerned, unless you upgrade your operating system to the point to where that version is no longer compatible. But if and when that happens, it's not something that's being crippled by the developers. But I digress. In today's episode, I'd like to show you how to enable fixed item lanes in Reaper 7 by default. Let's take a look. The project I've got open has 10 tracks that have absolutely nothing to do with this project. Or maybe I can find a way to work them in in a moment. If you've used any version of Reaper before version 7, then you're probably familiar with the traditional method of creating takes when recording the same part on the same track. This is a useful method of getting multiple performances of the same thing with the intention of creating a comp or composition by selecting the best parts of each performance. If you're new to this idea, or if maybe you're continuing to use an older version of Reaper and would like to know more about takes and comps, click the link above. So if you've upgraded from a previous version of Reaper to Reaper 7, your configuration for Reaper remains the same as it was in the previous version. What I mean by that is, since fixed item lanes didn't exist in previous versions, you can activate it on the desired track or tracks by right-clicking the track and toggling on the fixed item lanes option. If I add another track, we can see that the new track still has the traditional takes method engaged. And once again, I can activate fixed item lanes by right-clicking the track and enabling that function in the menu. In order to turn this on by default for all newly created tracks, I'll go to Options, Preferences, and under the Project section, Track Send Defaults. I have a previous video showing some of my favorite options for track defaults, but again, since Reaper 7 is new, there's some new options in here. In the middle section, I have an option to enable fixed item lanes by default. If I turn this on, it won't affect any of the tracks that I've already got in my project, but it will affect any newly created tracks after the change is made in this project and subsequent projects. So I'll go ahead and turn this on, press apply, and let's create a new track. There, my new track has fixed item lanes engaged. Back in the Reaper Preferences dialog to the right of fixed item lanes, there's another button that says Fixed Lane Defaults. Let's see what's in here. You can change your default for the fixed item lanes to be big or small. There's an option to allow editing source media while comping, which is turned off by default. Create comp areas for new recording while comping is turned on by default. And we can see a few other options down below that if I'm honest, I haven't reviewed yet, so I can't really speak intelligently about these just yet. I just want you to know that they're available. And the main takeaway from this is how to enable fixed item lanes by default. I'll be continuing to explore fixed item lanes in the near future. I'm really excited to see how this affects my drum editing workflow. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out my drum editing and reaper course on ProMix Academy. One caveat with that drum editing course, there are a few things that I teach in the course, particularly the creation of the fast edit and normal edit toolbar options that currently don't work in Reaper 7. John Tidy over at Reaper Block has a workaround for this, which involves using a script to create your own mouse modifier toggles, and you can click the link above to check out that video. In the meantime, I'll continue investigating Reaper 7 and see if I can figure out some sort of native way to replicate the same behavior. With Reaper 7 just coming out a few days ago, there's still plenty to discover. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me a Coffee, I like coffee. Patreon, or Super Thanks links below. You might also notice some shop links down below as well. Wouldn't it be great to have your own Let's Talk About Reaper t-shirt or coffee mug? I haven't bought one yet myself, but with the help of your donations, maybe one day I can afford my own coffee cup. Visit us on Discord and engage with other Reaper users. We'll see you next time. I can't believe myself. I never thought that this would be our end. But it's nothing new. My, love is my hair is a hot mess. It's late. I'm tired. And I'm sitting here trying to figure out Reaper stuff to make this video. If you want me to. 
I hope they like it. <laughs>